We don't have nearly enough priests in the church, but before we can ask why that is so, we first need to know what the priesthood is and why God calls men to this service in his church. We find the beginning of answers to these questions in the scripture lessons appointed for this Good Shepherd Sunday. Here in the Gospel according to St. John, we read that the Lord Jesus said of his disciples, My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. So, Christ is the Good Shepherd, but he is also the true Lamb of God. And the eternal life promised by the Good Shepherd in the earthly Jerusalem is revealed in today's second lesson as being consummated in the heavenly Jerusalem. I, John, had a vision of a great multitude which no one could count from every nation, race, people, and tongue. They stood before the throne and before the Lamb, wearing white robes and holding palm branches in their hands. The white robes, of course, are the sign of holy baptism. And the palm branches are tokens of Christ's victory over death, a victory he shares with all the martyrs who shared with him the burden of the cross. St. John continues, Then one of the elders said to me, These are the ones who have survived the time of great distress. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they stand before God's throne and worship him day and night in his temple. The Greek word, which is here translated elder, is presbyteros. And another way to render that word into English is presbyter, which, because the British swallow syllables, first became prester and then pressed and finally priest. In other words, in the glory of heaven, it is the mission of a presbyter, of a priest, to unveil the sacred mystery of the eternal worship of the Lamb once slain, the Lamb who lives forever. And that is the very mission of priests here and now, to unveil the sacred mysteries of divine worship by being heralds of the gospel and stewards of the sacraments. Moreover, priests are sent by God to teach that for us to stand before the Lamb in glory, we must first endure a time of great distress. And this we do by walking the way of the cross, beginning with our baptism in which we are washed clean by the blood of the Lamb and clothed with white as the sign that we in our baptism will reject whatever is contrary to the gospel. And in the first lesson today from the Acts of the Apostles, we see Saints Paul and Barnabas fulfilling this same priestly ministry. At the city of Antioch in modern Turkey, Paul and Barnabas proclaimed the gift of salvation in Jesus Christ, and for doing so, they earned the contempt of those who would not receive the gospel. But even as their message was rejected by some, it was received with joy by others. And so we read that at the beginning of that at the preaching of Paul and Barnabas, the Gentiles were delighted and glorified the word of the Lord. And all who were destined for eternal life came to believe, and the word of the Lord continued to spread through the whole region. And despite the hatred of those who conspired to have Paul and Barnabas run out of town, the disciples were filled with joy and the Holy Spirit because they had been made an instrument of salvation to the ends of the earth. Friends, this is the pattern of all priestly life and ministry in the church. And for those who are called by the Lord to such service, there is no greater joy than being an instrument of salvation, even when the response to priestly witness is contempt and opposition. On this Good Shepherd Sunday, the church asks us to pray that the Lord will send more laborers to gather in the great harvest of souls from every nation, race, people, and tongue, who will one day stand before the throne and the Lamb to worship the living God in his temple. But while we may desire in general that the church have more priests, 
We often hesitate in individual cases to encourage a young man we know and love to consider the priesthood because of the hardships of this life, because of the chaos and incoherence inside the church, and because of the scandalous failures of so many bishops and priests in recent years. But consider the beauty of the task to which men are summoned in the sacrament of holy orders, in which bishops and presbyters share the same priesthood in different degrees. The Lord Jesus entrusted to his apostles the sacred duties of teaching, sanctifying, and governing his church. And those duties have been handed on from generation to generation for 2,000 years through the apostolic succession to proclaim and explain the word of God, to celebrate the sacred mysteries of the new and eternal covenant, and to guide and protect the flock. These are the tasks of every bishop and priest, each according to his office. And it is a great joy for any man to be called to these sacred duties for the salvation of the world, even when sacrifice will be required in the face of opposition, contempt, and derision. Yes, the church today is deeply wounded and divided by false doctrine and immoral behavior, and the College of Bishops have so far proven themselves unable to summon the church to reform. Moreover, the world is riven by violence, tyranny, cultural dissolution, and unrivaled malevolence against Christianity. Christians in many places live in real danger of martyrdom, and in the theoretically free nations of the West, the dictatorship of relativism already presses hard against the church with hostile purpose, which in the years ahead is likely only to gather and grow. Meanwhile, nihilism and neo-gnostic fantasies fill the cultural air we breathe with cynicism and irony, which make true religion all but impossible for people who are lost in the idolatry of self-worship including the vast and growing army of baptized pagans who now say wistfully, I was raised Catholic. But did Paul and Barnabas face challenges any less grave than ours? Both men gave their lives in witness to Christ, as did countless other martyrs, and thus did the church grow despite persecution. Pagans became Christians by the millions because the disciples of the Lord Jesus were filled with joy in the Holy Spirit, even in their suffering. And that is how the church grows in every age, including ours. I believe that we do not have enough priests in our day, primarily because not enough Catholics are living the grace of their baptism with the deep conviction of personal conversion. And if we pray for young men to offer their lives as a sacrifice of praise to the living God, then we must all live that way as well. When we hear the Good Shepherd and follow him with faith, hope, and love, when our families and parishes are filled with disciples who truly understand and accept the cost of discipleship, when we prepare our young people to make a firm decision for the Lord Jesus because they are friends of Christ, who know that the gospel is the power of God into salvation for all who have faith, when we understand ourselves, our purpose, and our destiny through the revealed word of God rather than through the logic of the world, and when we are living the grace of our baptism in all its radical demands, then every Christian way of life flourishes in the church, including marriage, religious life, and the sacred priesthood. It is the mission of every priest, by word and sacrament, to draw back the veil between God and man and then hide himself in the folds, thus pointing the way to eternal communion with the Lord and all his saints. And in St. John's vision of heaven, the great multitude cry out, salvation comes from our God who is seated on the throne and from the Lamb. But the multitude are able to join in this ceaseless worship of the living God only because a presbyter, a priest, has unveiled for them the mystery of divine love in Jesus Christ. And to proclaim that saving truth is why men are called and sent as priests 
to reveal with their words and with their lives the eternal destiny of all who are in Christ and who are called to join the angels and the saints in crying out, Amen, blessing and glory, wisdom and thanksgiving, honor, power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Christos Anesti, Alithos Anesti, Alleluia, Alleluia. <laughs>